Wow, a sequel video to my sequel video. Who saw this coming? We're getting super meta here on the Captain Sarge YouTube channel. And today, we're looking at No More Heroes 2, a sequel to the cult classic which got ported to the Switch along with the first one. I finally picked this game up after playing and reviewing the first. The game gets rid of a lot of the complaints I had with the first game, focusing almost entirely on the fights instead of that weird empty open world. But did they go too far? Just because you can doesn't mean you should. Should they have left some things in? Or is this game a refined and focused masterpiece? Let's discuss. No More Heroes 1 was an interesting game. I don't know if satire is the right word, but main character Travis Touchdown is definitely a caricature of your standard weeb. The first game had some interesting characters outside of him, but at its core, Travis was just climbing the ranks in an attempt to hook up with the girl. Similar to John Wick, this sequel turns everything up to 11, including the world building. Now, everyone's an assassin or uses the assassins. I mean, even the CEO of the corporation that runs the city is himself the number one assassin. Travis has been out of the game but is driven by revenge here and is all about climbing the ranks to take on this number one CEO assassin person. Why can't Travis go straight to him? Uh, because otherwise the game wouldn't happen. So now, because he's been out of the game, he's ranked 51 and can only get his revenge by first killing the 49 other assassins standing between him and number one. Much like the first game, each assassin fight has their own theme and style, which leads to some very unique encounters. Now, there aren't 50 individual fights. Instead, there are a number of fights that are against groups of assassins, that lets you hurdle up the leaderboard in about 10 fights. More so than the first game, each fight has its own unique gimmick, and most of them work, but there are a couple, specifically the motorcycle jousting, and sadly the final fight of the game, which just do not work at all, and are instead extremely frustrating and almost entirely unenjoyable. The combat feels mostly unchanged from the first game, Still a lot of button mashing, ending with a swipe attack to finish off the enemy. I felt there was less grappling than in the first game, but that might have just been my playstyle changing. Overall, the flow of the fights is the same too. Uh, you fight your way through waves of faceless enemies, finally reach the big boss, and fight them. Graphically though, the environments especially are vastly improved from the first game. Gone are the featureless hallways, replaced by slightly featured hallways or large courtyards. Graphically, I think this game is a huge step up from the first, which is really impressive given that both came out on the Wii. Also impressive is this game's horniness. Uh, the first game had a lot of sexual undertone as well, but in this game they actually become overtones. Everything is turned up to 11 here, including the jiggle physics uh, on both the women and the men for some reason. I get that it's kind of the point to come off cringy. You know, it is a caricature type thing, but ah, it's cringy. It's it's cringy. They nailed it, but they nailed it too hard, if that makes sense. The game is also completely streamlined compared to the first. Gone is the open world. Instead, you get a list of places that you can go. Personally, I think this is great, because unless they had some great idea on how to make the open world interesting, which they did not do in one, there is no point to it being there. It was just a waste of time in the first game trying to drive around the city to get to the three places that you wanted to go. Just like the first game, there are mini games, but luckily, gone is the re requirement of grinding money to partake in the fights. So you can mostly ignore them. There are a lot of clothing options that you can buy, but those are purely cosmetic. There are a number of weapons you can buy and a few upgrades that you can get for them. But you can get those pretty quickly. It doesn't require a ton of money. Pretty much play through each of the minigames one or two times. So it's much less of a chore than it was in the first game. Unlike the first game, all of these minigames, except for one, are retro 8-bit styled games. This was kind of cool at first, but I wish there was some variation in the style. I wish they weren't all old school NES feeling games. Because I'm just, I'm not a retro gamer. I don't like that style of game. 
Wish they had either brought over some from the first game in that same 3D style, or even come up with some like in between style. Again, luckily you don't really need to do these that much if you don't want to, and if you like them, then you can do it as much as you want. Uh, the style of it just didn't work for me. Now I have a qualm with some of the comments from my first No More Heroes videos. I was told that there was less screaming during the fights. Uh, you, you, you lied to me, buddy. This game is just as bad with the unbearable and constant screaming sound effects. My ears are still bleeding. And the music is on par with the first and almost essentially lifted from the first, which was also not that great, but at the same time, just oddly catchy. It was like upbeat elevator music. Ultimately, No More Heroes 2 is like a more of the same type of game. I think if you liked the first, I don't know how you wouldn't like the second, because it's, it's just all the good parts of the first game and none of the bad parts of the first game. But if you didn't like the first game, Unless, really, the only complaint you had was grinding money or the open world. There's nothing new here that's going to change your mind. Combat didn't feel evolved in any significant way. Uh, sometimes it even felt simplified in an almost bad way. The story is fine, but like I said, a little excessive. The innuendo just becomes outuendo, and the sound mixing is still just this loud, screamy mess. There's definitely some unique and fun boss fights, but there's also some very poorly designed, tedious and frustrating ones. Definitely has its charm. I'm glad I played through it. I personally enjoy this kind of charming, weird game, but I understand this not for everyone. So it's really, if, if this is not your niche, it's, it's not going to ap appeal to you. It's, it's a very narrow game with narrow appeal. Overall, I would give the presentation a 3 out of 5, the gameplay a 3.5 out of 5, the story a 2.5 out of 5, with an overall rating of a 3 out of 5, and I would say for value, it, it's worth getting if you liked the first game. Again, don't pick this up on a whim. Play the first one first, too, I think. There is technically some narrative there. And it's only 20 bucks. It's only 20 bucks. Sure, you can wait for it to go on sale if you want, but I think 20 bucks is fine for this kind of a game. So what do you think? Is No More Heroes 2 significantly better or worse than the first? Are you excited for No More Heroes 3? I know it's on the Switch. It's also coming out on a number of other consoles here. Soon, I'm excited. I have my day one PS5 edition pre-ordered. Let me know in the comments down below. If you liked the video, maybe hit that like button. Maybe subscribe to the channel. Maybe send videos to a friend so other people can watch me ramble about video games. Isn't that so much fun? What kind of games do you want me to ramble about next? Again, comments, comment, comment, blah, blah, blah. Uh, call to action. I will see you all with the next video.